The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Week four of college football is finally in the books. We are very excited to talk about it and recap all of the major things happening there in week four over in college football. And then, of course, we're going to have to get into week three of the NFL and talk a little bit about what's going on over there. A lot of exciting stuff going on, a lot of high scoring games. We're going to talk about all of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We are very excited to get to it because it was week four. Yes, we have already gotten to week four, and man, it was a fun one, though, all right? We talked about this on Saturday, and if you've tuned in, you saw us talk about these games and how action-packed this week was, and it really was. It was a really fun weekend. I had a blast watching all the games, uh, being able to go through and just, just have fun with it. You know, and it, college football season being here, it's the best time of the year, uh, and of course, we thrive on college football season here on Rising to the Occasion, so whenever we get to Mondays and, and talking, to, you know, I guess, for our Tuesday episode, uh, we are going to talk a lot about college football, so make sure you're tuned in, but let me go ahead and bring in my co-hosts for the evening. Let me go ahead and bring in Blake Lane from Alabama. Blake, how you doing, man? What's up, fellas? Glad to be here. Uh, what a great weekend of college football it was. Uh, there was a lot of exciting matchups, a lot of great finishes, uh, a lot of uh, prime time matchups that didn't turn out to be prime time, but uh, we'll get into that a little later. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, my Auburn Tigers fell. Uh, you know, uh, it was a tough one. Couldn't get the offense going, but uh, bigger and brighter things ahead. And uh, we got a tough one this week with uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. So uh, there, there's, uh, we're, we're looking into the future, though, man. We're going to take our lashings this year, uh, and, and we're just looking at the future. So hopefully we can grow on this past Saturday and just keep getting better, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, too, I think, yeah, yeah whenever you're a first-year first year coach, you got a first-year head coach, you just got to be, mm-hmm. be uh, kind of – mindful of that and just kind of take it easy uh not really not really talk too much uh about what's going on you know and and taking too much of it to heart i think you just gotta kind of go with the flinch the with the punches and and just take it as as it comes um but yeah i mean jeremy how you doing bro i'm doing pretty good back here in the old hometown of sioux city iowa and then same along with blake and you guys mentioned we got we had some great football college football this weekend i was ecstatic to get to watch all the games, then I know we got some high scoring games. We got some really close scoring games. Then there's some games that you just thought, what the heck are you guys doing? But if you guys are going to stick around, I'm going to cut the chit chat and let's get kicking. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But guys, let's get to it. Cause uh, there's a lot to get to, but before we do, uh, let's go ahead and start off first by mentioning our sponsors for the evening. Uh, and, and that's really just betting some betting on sports just in general. Uh, all of us love to, to put a little bit of a wager on the game. It's a lot of fun. It gets you kind of into the game. It kind of gets you involved with mm-hmm. the game. Uh, and so, you know, it's it's just it's a fun way to enjoy watching any kind of sport, whether it be your college football games or whether it be NFL sports, sports betting overall in America, just as a whole here in the last few years, it's really rapidly been rising in popularity, too. And I want to connect with our listeners and, and our our following and everything to let you guys know with a great opportunity that we have for you guys. Uh, because having multiple sports accounts, sports book accounts, I should say, uh, that's the best way to maximize your profits, be able to find the best uh, bets out there, the best odds for all of your betting. And there's really been a, never a better way to do it than just going over to rising2.com slash bet. You can go over there and what it'll do is it'll show you all of these sports books that are available in your area and it will automatically just throw them right at you and show you which ones are available. Uh, not only that, but it also gives you the best, most exclusive offers that any of them uh, have to offer right now. Any of the, the most popular sports books, whether it be DraftKings or uh, FanDuel. Uh, another one that I've been getting into was Bet365. That was a fun one uh, that I've been finding a lot of good odds on and stuff like that. But there, there's no better way to bet on sports than to be looking out for 
the best odds and and looking for those odds that way you can maximize your money but i wanted to bring you guys in before doing the ad read today because i wanted to kind of go over this with you uh all right so i just want to hear uh if you uh maybe a hit or a miss on each of these picks so we've got monday night football coming up here tonight uh we're we're recording this on a monday um and so we're gonna talk about talk a little hit or miss all right so i want to hear from you guys let's start off with t higgins 60 plus yards do you think that's a hit or miss on a pick uh blake start off with you um who are they playing uh they're going against the rams Rams. tonight la rams t higgins uh, i'm i'm gonna say joe burrow is playing so uh i'm gonna say hit i I think i think he gets it he's been his favorite target this year uh jeremy how about you Definitely hitting the hit. Obviously, T inside the red zone. He's been Joe Burrow's go-to guy. Then, obviously, see T Higgins just run a flat route. If it if Jamar Chase isn't open, he's probably going to try and hit you. So I'm smashing the hit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How about Tutu Atwell over there with the Rams, forty plus yards on receiving for the night, Blake? Mm, I'm going to go forty plus. Yeah, I'm hit it. Hit it. All right, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of these are a little easier. How about you, Jeremy? Let's hit it. Let's roll. All right now, Puka Nakua. He's been he's been looking crazy right now uh, mm. for what they've been able yeah. to use utilize him as. Uh, there's a there's a pick. If you go alternate receiving yards, sixty plus yards. How do you, how you guys feel about that one, Blake? I'm not going there. You're not going there. You know, you're not thinking sixty, Jeremy. You think sixty plus yards, Puka Puka Nakua. <sighs> Plus, I just love saying his name, so why not throw him in there? <laughs> I'm going to go three for three. I think he's going to hit it. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's go Matthew Stafford, 225-plus re- uh, re- passing yards tonight. How you feeling about that one, Jeremy? As much as I want to say miss, I think Matthew Stafford's going to have a game just because our secondary needs some work. So right. I'm going to say hit. Yeah, I mean, uh, right now, I mean, I think the the average sports book has him sitting right around like 248. So I'm lowering this down to 225. Yeah. How about, how do you feel about that one, Blake? Yeah, hit it. Uh, All right. The Bengals secondary. All right, and then we got Kyron Williams, 50 plus yards. I know a lot of these aren't gonna aren't gonna help our viewers, but just kind of going through this anyways, because hey, you guys can make fun of us for these silly picks uh, later on. Uh, so Kyron Williams, 50 plus rushing yards, Jeremy. Hit. Like I uh, said, get past the Bengals secondary. Yeah, I feel like, like I feel like you gotta you gotta have the running game going at least you know fifty yards with your main back for tonight. So uh how about you, Blake? Yeah. Uh yeah, I mean fifty, man. If you can't get fifty, you're not gonna win the game, right? So yeah. uh Yeah, yeah I, I mean that's that's where we're going with the two. All these are alternate right now too, so I mean a lot of these aren't even the, the standard of what most sports books are expecting from these guys. All right, let's jump over to the Philly versus Tampa Bay game uh, and talk Mike Evans over 58 and a half receiving yards. That's actually the the standard sports book, what they're sitting at right now. Under. You're thinking under 58 and a half? All right, you're mm-hmm. thinking big time secondary play. How about you, Jeremy? I haven't had a chance to see what Mike Evans really has done with this year, so... I'm gonna go with the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna miss it with Mike Evans. Okay, so we're taking a miss on that one. All right. How about Devonte Smith, fifty plus uh, rushing yards, Blake? Rushing or receiving? Receiving. I might have said rushing, but I meant receiving. Uh, I was gonna say he, he ain't rushing for <laughs> for fifty yards unless unless they do a lot of jet sweeps tonight. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh man, I hope he has under because I need DeAndre Swift. So let's say miss. <laughs> All right. How about you, Jeremy? Blake, I was going to say the exact same thing. Swifty needs to do something, but let's do a miss on that. All right, well, let's go on to DeAndre Swift then. Over 41 and a half rushing yards. That's what the, that's what oh. they're sitting him at. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy? He's going to be looking like a rainbow going right over it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't even think DeAndre needs to really try. I don't think the Philly Eagles, I feel like no. the Eagles need to try, but uh, that, all of that was put together in a parlay uh for let's see it looks like an overall 5779 so that's a plus 5779 so that's an mm-hmm. that's in a big parlay that was that was one that i i saw out there that i was looking at i was like man like somebody's somebody's making some good good picks to put it up to that high of odds out there that's over on fanduel so 
guys, go check it out. Rising2.com slash bet. And you can you can find deals like this uh, and, and go check it out and just have fun with it. And that's 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 the fun of sports betting is is making it a game rather than making it maybe an addiction. We don't we don't support that. We do not condone that. But if you go to rising2.com slash bet, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B E T. You can check out all of the best sports books in your area uh, and see all of the best exclusive offers as well. And if you're not into, uh, if you don't have a, a region that has sports books, they're going to offer you things that are kind of a daily fantasy and stuff like that too. So there's all kinds of stuff for wherever you are in the nation. So go check it out. Again, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash bet, rising dot com slash bet. And you can see all of these sports books and related uh, all in your area and the most exclusive offers as well. But guys, let's get into college football recap. I'm going to start off with my Oklahoma Sooners. I'm going to be a little, little biased and, and picking up, uh, you know, with, with my team just because I was, I was impressed. I know a lot of people around the nation weren't too impressed with Oklahoma, but Oklahoma hasn't been getting, getting any kind of hype and I love it. Uh, I hope it stays mm-hmm. this way. Uh, especially after this weekend, just keep it where there's no talk about Oklahoma because then the weekend after that, October 7th, is the Red River rivalry, the Red River shootout. It's going to be a fun one, uh, and, and I'm looking forward to it because right now Oklahoma is not just 4-0 and on the season. They're 4-0 and against the spread right now, one of five D1 teams that are 4-0 uh, uh, and against the spread so far. Uh, so that's that's an incredible thing to do because it's, it's tough to win games, but to win them and – be winning against the spread that's really tough to do uh their defense right now they look way more athletic and they're really more in sync with this system too and that's one thing that we love to see they're allowing less than 100 yards uh, on the on the ground on defense uh, and then they're also only allowing eight and a half points per game which is something that you love to see whenever you're looking at your own defense uh, and then uh, honestly i think you look back at this weekend the offense only put up 20 points but they looked fine they looked like they were still in sync the rushing game was was a little little deflated uh, they had a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of uh, rhythm that was that was off pace and stuff like that but overall they did what they had to do they put up 20 points the defense did their job and you didn't really have to put up much more than that so I'm not too too down on the on the offense overall Dylan Gabriel he's looking really good he's been playing outstanding with 1227 passing yards 12 touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns on that and 78 percent completion percentage uh, which a lot of those are just weird dropped passes that are just I don't know how to explain those. Just the receivers not not keeping up with with the uh, the ball or something. Uh, but overall, the wide receiver depth has really improved this year. Uh, so looking at Oklahoma and what they've done so far throughout the, the year, uh, you know, I, I guess with the wide receivers adding An- A- Andrew, uh, uh, what's his name now, uh, Andrew Anthony. I'm, I'm getting them mixed up here, and then also Nick Anderson, uh, just because their their last names are so so similar. Adding those two guys out there at wide out that really makes the wide receiver depth a lot deeper uh, and I think this Oklahoma team looks better this year and it's exciting to see because you're, you're like we've mentioned Oklahoma several times on the show you're going to have to start playing better um, but it, especially whenever you're getting into the SEC play here next season so you're not not too far away from from SEC play you're going to have to kick it into gear and that defense is really what's what's standing out to me but Oklahoma ends up winning against Cincinnati at Cincinnati and uh, guys I mean they, they won 20 to 6 like I said Defense looking really good, um, but Blake, did you have too much on that game? Uh, no, nah, man. Uh, you talking about the Oklahoma game? Yeah, yeah, Oklahoma. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Oklahoma Sooners are playing defense. All right, and look, I know Emory Jones um, has been in college for ten years and everything, and and he's bounced around and all that, but. Uh, this Oklahoma team is for real on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, and and I've, I've been screaming this to Josh that Oklahoma would eventually get it together. That's why they made the hire up. I just keep saying it and saying it and saying it. And you're seeing an ath- a more athletic defense. You're seeing a defense that is tackling. That's the biggest thing to me is of when they, when they would get out in space, they couldn't tackle out in the open field. They're doing that. They're getting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, and and that is the most impressive thing is uh, the, the, we know what they're going to do on offense. Oklahoma is going to score, right? They're going to put up points. Uh, there was there was a couple of drives that kind of stalled the other day, uh, but they were they were 
in control of the entire game. I really felt like this could have – I really felt like they could have won this game by three scores, man. Uh, I just felt like that fourth quarter, they were just kind of uh, methodically driving the ball down the field, not really uh, wanting to push tempo because they had the game in hand. You don't want to make a mistake. Uh, and, and I think that's Brett Venable's style of play, man, is, hey, we're up two scores. Let's not make a mistake. Let's not do anything crazy here. And um, – you know, Oklahoma comes out with a win, man. Look, it's all it's all leading down to the Red River, man, and uh, I think that's going to be one for the ages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, the way it's looking right now, too, it's just building up to that. Um, but while we're talking, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about the Red River, we're talking about uh, the Big Twelve and their defenses. Jeremy, I know you you were talking, you were wanting to bring up the Texas Baylor game. Let's go ahead and jump over to that game, man. Uh, what do we have there in that Texas Baylor game? Listen, Texas has definitely been on the prowl ever since they came off their big win. And looking at this last week's game against Baylor with a final score of 30, 38 to 6, excuse me, this team hasn't let off the gas one single big. Quinn Ewers obviously having a game, throwing 18 for 23 and having uh, 328 total yards for the game. I mean, you look at this Texas squad and – they are definitely showing them the reason why that they mean business this upcoming season. Like even looking at their play by play or even like for their team stats, their their stats overall for the entire game looked really, really good. But the third down efficiency could have been a little bit better, but I mean still having a three for nine on a third down uh, efficiency isn't isn't terrible, but it's not the greatest outcome. Like you want to see these guys get like seven to nine or even like eight to nine. Like I know you're not going to be perfect, obviously, on every third down conversion, but I mean, still, you look on the other side for Baylor, their conversion was five for eighteen, and that definitely definitely hurt this team. And looking at look outside of the first quarter obviously being only seven to three once texas got their feet rolling they didn't let off the gas bill having 21 points in the second quarter and then obviously getting 10 more points in the third then getting nothing in the fourth these guys definitely mean business looking at their roster like i said with quinn newers he's definitely showing the reason why he's here and he's here to mean business to say the least yeah yeah absolutely uh i mean you you look at this too this texas team Again, I bring them up because we were just now talking about Oklahoma and the defensive play. Now we're leading into that that Red River rivalry, man. I'm I'm getting more and more excited about it, but I hope everything just stays quiet for really both of these teams yeah. because I think both these teams haven't been talked about a whole lot. Texas is number three in the nation right now in the AP poll. I know it doesn't mean much in week four, but they're number three right now, and they're still not really getting talked about too much because you got guy, you know, teams like Colorado and, and Coach Prime being talked about, and you got uh, you know Alabama's downfall being talked about. And, you know, you've got other teams. I'd say Georgia is even one of them that really aren't, uh, you know, that they really they really aren't being talked about the way that they should be at this point. Um, you know, it's a bunch of teams. And I think Oklahoma, Texas, both uh, a couple of teams, Texas was really only talked about when they beat Alabama. And then the, the narrative mm-hmm. was off of them. Uh, and so leading into it, it's going to be a loud game. It's going to be a very exciting, exciting game. And I think there's a lot leading into it. Um, because, you know, a lot of people were worried that, you know, Texas only only won, uh, you know, against uh, Wyoming last week by 21 points. And, you know, that's just not not as much offense as you expect. But their defense is showing up. And same thing with Oklahoma. Everyone's like, you know, man, Oklahoma's not scoring 50 points a game. No, but their defense is showing up. And like you said, Blake, uh, just open field tackling. And I think that's something Texas has been doing well, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Like like we said back months ago, man, they're both headed to the SEC. You're going to have to play defense. And I think both programs made terrific hires uh, with Sark and everything he's done at Texas. He's boosted that defense up. Obviously, we know what he can do on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, I love both hires, and I can't wait for both teams to join the SEC. But I, I think this is a collision course one more time for the Big 12 title. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for it. You know, looking at it, and and how much more of a story would that storyline would that be too? Like last last year for these huge. two teams in the conference, yeah. uh, it would just be, it'd be sweet for the for these two teams. Of course, the rest of the the conference would hate that. The rest of the conference is you know not calling pass interference plays right there in the in the end zone when you shove a dude down to go make a play on the ball. Uh, you know, just because they don't want to see that, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of fun. But talking about how these two teams are 
not talked about enough. I think you look over at a team that may have been talked about too much. And a lot of it, it's not even the, the fact that we're, we're trying to hate on Dion. It's just getting annoying that we're listening to, to him being talked about so much. But we're going to talk about him because he just, he just let a lot of people down. I think a lot of people were expecting him to cover a 21-point spread. Uh, and I came on here on Saturday and said that I thought they'd cover a 21-point spread, but they didn't do that, Blake. Uh, they they didn't they didn't uh, they didn't look too too great. All right, all right. Look, if you're wait, a Blake, Dion, let me go get some popcorn quick. I want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Dion guy, okay, there is nothing wrong with that. I'm okay with that, um, but. Let's go back to week one when we were talking TCU and Colorado. All right. I was wrong on the spread, and I was wrong on the winner of the game. But I kept telling you that Colorado was not a good football team. I kept saying it after they beat Nebraska. Colorado is not a good football team. The media, sports media, was trying to make Colorado into something that they aren't. And like Josh said, Texas isn't getting talked about enough. Oklahoma isn't getting talked about enough. Georgia isn't getting talked about enough. You want to know why? Because all ESPN can do is stay on Dion 24-7. All right, I watched 60 Minutes. He was on 60 Minutes. For what? For what? He hasn't done anything. He hasn't won anything. He couldn't even win the championship in the HBCU. For what? He's a great coach. I get it. All right? I get it. He's going to do great things in the Power Five. He's probably going to go take Colorado to the Big 12 next year, and they're going to do amazing things. They might win the conference. I don't know. But. This year, people were sitting here saying that Prime was going to take this team into Autzen Stadium, and they were getting disrespected by a 21-point underdog. There's no way Dion could be a 21-point underdog. Did you see what they did to Colorado State? Yeah, I watched it. And, and while the game was going on, I said, hey, next week, Oregon's going to beat Colorado by 50. You want to know why? Here's why. Colorado's offensive line, absolute trash. It's cheeks, buns, all right? I've seen middle school O-lines better than that. Are they great at the skill positions? Yes. Shadur Sanders couldn't do anything Saturday. You want to know why? Like I said, his O-line, buns, all right? Their defense, horrible. No pass rush, nothing. DB's getting ate up out in space. Can't tackle, can't do anything. They're terrible. That's just the reality of it. All right, You can't run the football on offense. I think they had 50 yards rushing on offense, or like 46, something like that. It's terrible. They're one-dimensional. Shadur can only do, too, uh, only do so much. You didn't have Travis Hunter, and I want to stop that narrative right now that, oh, well, if they'd have had Travis Hunter. Yeah, if they'd have had Travis Hunter, it ended up 42 to 9. So... Like I, I'm, I'm tired of the, I'm tired of the prime stuff, and just absolutely on him twenty four seven, and he comes out and I saw a tweet from busting with the boys, busting with the boys or whatever, and they were like, even Coach Prime wins when he loses, and it's him shaking Dan Lennon's hand, <laughs> and I was like, man, y'all are obsessed. You're obsessed. It is getting old, quick, fast, in a hurry. It is old. It's played out. They're not good. Stop trying to make them be good. I saw the little Fox News desk, the Fox Sports desk sitting here, and it was like Nick Wright and Chris Broussard and all them, and they're like, oh, Colorado, there's no way they're going to get beat by 21 points. Man, come on. You really thought Dan Lanning wasn't about to scheme something up to absolutely heat up Shador Sanders and make them zero-dimensional? He already knew they couldn't run the ball. And then Keyshawn Johnson wants to get up here and say, oh, well, I, I was told by multiple assistant coaches that this is the most Dan Lanning has ever talked to other coaches around the league about Prime and the Colorado Buffaloes. All right, Newsflash, buddy, you played football. 
Coaches talk to other coaches every single week. It's not just because of Prime. Like It's literally every single week you talk to other coaches about a game plan for who you're playing that week. Like Everybody thinks that Deion Sanders created football. Like It is annoying. I'm glad he got spanked. Uh, I'm glad Dan Lanning made the uh, pregame speech, and I thought that was one of the best pregame speeches that we've heard. It ain't being played out in Hollywood. All right, it's being played on the grass. They're playing for clicks, and we're playing for wins. Period. And I love it when he said, talk with your helmet. All right? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love oh, yeah. it, bro. I love it. And then at half, and then at half, they said, hey, are you satisfied? He said, heck, no, I ain't satisfied. He said, we're putting up more. And he said, I hope for all those people that have watched for three weeks, I hope they're still watching right now because I'm showing you they haven't done nothing. They're nothing right now. So stop trying to make them something, period. No, and we, we talked about this on Saturday about how, you know, there was just no way that this offense was going to be able to keep up with Oregon's offense, regardless of how the defenses play, because they don't have an offensive line. I mean, you can't win without an offensive line. I think there's plenty of teams that can show you that. And, you know, it's just it's it's pathetic. I, I think you you look at at the way that they played and and you know what I, I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a little step back from where where Blake was at and give give a little bit of a prop to coach prime for how he reacted uh, to the to the loss because I think he reacted better than I would have expected um, that's not saying a whole lot but I, I was I was happy with his response to it and, and he did the same thing last week with how, how everyone was kind of going after that Colorado State player uh, who it was it was a little bit of a dirty hit but it was it's football and you know what? Yeah. There's a lot of emotions riding in that game, and Prime kind of said the same thing. And even with this one, he gave hats off to the, to the to the other team and everything. And he doesn't he doesn't want to ever see this team at that low again and everything. And so, I think he handled the loss well. Um, well but I mean, he's he got he, five he, 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 he got he got spanked, uh, you know. And it's just it, we. I think a lot of people they were shocked as if Oregon couldn't have done this. We even talked about it. We didn't want to take the spread because. It was one of those games where we could see Oregon running away with this because of that offensive line and no run game. Uh, like you said, you take away Shadur Sanders, they're zero dimensional. Uh, what what dimension do they have to fall on if they don't have Shadur Sanders making plays? Uh, you know, they're not going to run the ball, and they they can't really. I mean, we don't we don't think there's going to be able to have anything done on the defensive side. And yeah, I agree with you. I think Travis Hunter could have possibly made it seven points difference. Maybe you make it forty two to thirteen. At the most, yeah. because you might have been able to take away, uh, you know, a passing touchdown or something like that. I don't know, uh, but it's not going to one dude. One dude changes the game, but not that much. Not 42 to six get difference. Josh, you know, one thing in, in, that really got to me, too, is it's like they played one game, man. And it was huh, Shadur for Heisman, Travis Hunter for Heisman. And I'm like, stop stop, they played one game. And everybody's all of a sudden on this train of Shadur for Heisman and, and Travis Hunter is the greatest college football player we've ever seen. I, I'm not bashing those dudes. I'm just saying that from the media side of things, we have we got to slow down, man. Like, y'all were on, on prime on a completely another level. It's like, I go back to the USC in 2004 days. They were on top of the world, all right? I didn't see nobody gassing Pete Carroll up like this when he had Snoop Dogg and and uh, uh, all the superstars out there, P. Diddy and Will Ferrell out there on the sidelines and all those cats. I, they were all out there. Dr. Dre, and we wasn't sitting here gassing Pete Carroll up. Like, it's just... It's to the point, man, where you can't even turn on your TV without there's a prime, there's a prime ad. Well, and that's that's and, why I say like I don't I don't dislike prime so much rather than just the media attention drawn really? to it. Uh, and and I've 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 had the same the same uh, stance on Colorado and Coach Prime since he got to Colorado, and I've made that clear on this show too. I think you know where I, I'm right in the middle. Because I'm I'm not all hyped up on him and overhyping him the way that a lot of people in the media are, uh, but I'm not hating on him the way that I think a lot of haters yeah. are. I I wouldn't go as far mm -hmm. as as you to say that they're a bad team, 
I, but I don't okay. think they're as good of a team as everyone's <laughs> hyping them up to be. And this this proved it. Uh, I do think that Oregon is just that good on defense, uh, and mainly mm-hmm. just that pass rush. And we we talked about their pass rush. They they've been good all season long, uh, and, and that's that's a big part of their defense. I think if you take away take away that front that front five that they've got over there uh, on defense, I think that that does a lot for you. Um, yeah. So I, I think I think looking at Oregon, I think Oregon was just this good to be able to take down. A decent team. I don't think I don't think Colorado's good yet, uh, and and that's kind of where I stand. I don't think they're as bad as I, I think a lot of people were were are discrediting the TCU win, and I don't think you discredit that, but you do have to recognize that they lost so much, and so yeah, yeah good job. You you beat a tough team to beat, but uh, you you also went on. Everyone wanted to hype up their defense. You brought their defense up. They don't have a defense. Everyone wanted mm-hmm. to hype up their defense whenever they held Nebraska down to seven points for a while. Guess what? That was Nebraska's offense that gave you points. They gave you 16 points. They gave them to you. They didn't even try to to reserve them. They were just, hey, here you go. It's Oprah Winfrey. You get points. You get points. We're just giving away these points. 16 points to Colorado. So, yeah, their offense didn't do good. Uh, and, and like the, the clip you were talking about, uh, what is it, like first first things first or something like that? Sitting there and talking about how they, they stuck it to Nebraska, Big Ten defense. No, Nebraska's defense – played outstanding and their offense gave them 16 points uh so that's that's where i stand on that i think their defense hasn't shown anything all year Uh, and anyone who says that they 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 have is just ridiculous um but yeah oregon absolutely dismantled everything uh and and a a lot of the the narrative has been dismantled because of because of uh, you know what oregon did to them i'm i'm sorry jeremy uh you know i didn't mean to Take take your time. Uh, no, we and, we said that, dude. This is your soapbox. You get to talk yeah. about them because you're the Oregon fan now. Like, look, I I, I want to see Colorado do well. Like, I want to see Prime take them to a bowl game. But that was my main thing, man. Is people were like, they jumped them straight up to number eighteen in the AP top twenty five, and I'm like, Slow there's no roll. way, you, there's no way you watch football and say that's a top twenty five team. I don't even think they're top 40. Might not be, even be top 50 because their defense is that bad. Um, I just I, – I, I hated the, the, the meat riding, man. I, I really did. I hated it. And uh, it's not it's not anything against Prime. Like, I think he's going to do great things. I really do. But it just got annoying, man. And, and, you know, he says that he never wants to see his team down this bad again. Well, uh, you got five days, brother. And uh, – you're gonna get it again. Well, and, so. and there was there was one team that I said that they stand a chance against. It wasn't Oregon. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. one big team that they stand a chance with upsetting, and it was USC because you look at USC. I think these two teams are very identical. It's just at yep. least USC can run the ball. That's why I think USC is gonna win. And after watching what they did on defense against Oregon, they couldn't even slow them down. Uh, mm-hmm. The interception was just a bad a bad throw by Bo Nix. It was just too low. That's a that's a ball. He made the right decision. That's a ball you got to loft up over the the defender. Uh, and if he puts mm-hmm. that on the right spot, that's that, you know that it was a good decision though. Uh, and so that's the only interception they got was a bad throw that was thrown too low right to the defender. Um, mm-hmm. But Jeremy, real quick, you got anything extra to add to that game? I'm just trying to soak in everything from Pastor Blake over there a little bit. Um, <laughs> No, Blake. Father Blake. Blake, Father Blake, there you go. I mean, Blake's literally said the best. And I can even add on to it because literally almost every time I'm on social media, there's always something related with Prime and Colorado. It's overhyped, overrated. And I will admit, I was I'm kind of the same boat with Josh. I like Prime, but at the same time, I'm not the biggest fan of Prime. He can handle certain situations good, but you can obviously understand there's a fine line between right and wrong here. And obviously that line was way crossed over just because of how over, I don't know how I want to put it over, ex- over exceeded that Colorado got put with everything, but I'm in the same boat as Blake here. I, I can definitely easily see them not even be in the top 30, 40, even 50, but you definitely – it's your first year. I understand. You're going to have a lot of a lot of hype, but give it these couple years, then maybe you can actually get get the prime talk in out of all these kind of circumstances. But until then, 
slow your roll a little bit here, buddy. Yeah, from the words of, of Travis Kelsey, slow your roll and shut your mouth, you jabroni. Shut um, your mouth. But <laughs> let's, let's jump over to Washington State versus Oregon State. I don't have a whole lot to say about this game, but I wanted to bring this game up because between Oregon, uh, you know, I, I kind of did the same thing with the Big 12 there just a minute ago. The same thing with Oregon. Uh, and, and we talked about Washington, uh, and, and then now we jump over to Washington State. There's something, and and Washington State uh, going against Oregon State. Oregon State's a decent team this year, you know, like their their defense looks good. But what I want to bring bring up about the Pac-12 because I've heard a lot of a lot of shade being thrown towards certain teams, as if uh, in, in the Pac-12 specifically, as if the Pac-12 doesn't have a defense. Uh, and I want to jump over to this game just to show Washington State and Oregon State because uh, this was a good defensive battle. Uh, and then another one to throw in that we didn't, we we're not going to get to today was Utah UCLA. I don't want to hear that there's no defense in the Pac-12 because there's been there's been a, a change in the tide, and there is defense out in the Big Twelve, or in the, I think I said Big Twelve, but Pac-12. Uh, so there is there is defense out there, and the defenses are playing very good. Uh, you know, you look at Oregon, you look at Washington, jumping over to Washington State, Oregon State. Washington State owned this game defensively for a long time against a pretty good Oregon State uh, offense. But Oregon State with DJU, uh, he just looked like retro DJU. He's inconsistent, uh, and we shouldn't have ever expected anything different uh, than inconsistency from him, even though he is going to a new team. But overall, I just wanted to highlight a few of these these Pac-12 uh, games just, just to show because I'm, I'm really tired of the I'm I'm really tired of the the hype as if uh you know against the Pac-12 as if there is no defense uh you know because I think people are are disrespecting Utah and they're disrespecting Oregon they're disrespecting uh Washington because as if they don't have any defenses out there but uh sorry Jeremy I can't pull that up for everyone else to see but maybe, maybe we'll pull that up another time <laughs> Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll throw that up. Maybe I can edit that in there for everybody so they can see what. There you go. The group. It there threw me off, go. though. I'm sitting here seeing a text pop in, and it, it kind of threw me off. I stumbled over my words there for it. But, uh, guys, I mean, just uh, overall, obviously Washington State, Oregon State, they owned it this game until the fourth quarter. I don't know what happened in the fourth quarter because I didn't watch the fourth quarter. I, I was clicking through over to this game watching it, and they looked great. And then all of a sudden, 21 points in the fourth quarter. They just let off the gas pedal. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy to see the Pac-12 playing good defense overall as a whole. 100%. I, I think they're the best conference in America. Uh, right now, it feels like it. I mean, you got Oregon and Washington. Yeah. Uh, uh, with those two teams alone, I feel like that's Utah. I'm Utah. Ta- let's talk about Utah because yeah. they're doing all this without Cam Rising right now. Uh, I, w- I was listening to Jake, uh, Jake Crane say that today that if they don't have Cam Rising in the game, he's taking uh, – who are they going against? Uh, was it Oregon State or Washington State? Oregon State. At Oregon State this week. I think he said he was taking Oregon State if they don't have Cam Rising. I think that's crazy because without without Cam Rising, they're still playing ex- extremely well on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, and so, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, but anyways, getting back to this Washington State Oregon State game, I, I just, it was, it was fun to watch because you got to see. A, a defense stand tall in the Pac-12, and I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discredit them for what happened in the fourth quarter because uh, crazy things happen in the fourth quarter. But they ended up pulling this out, and, and Washington State looks really good this year. Uh, they're they're another one of those teams. I don't think they're quite up to the level of uh, Washington or Oregon yet. I think those are the top two teams for me in the in the Pac-12. USC's up there, but can they put together a defensive stand? That's what I got to see from them. But, yeah, I agree with you. I, I love the Pac-12 this year and for the for the finale. Go out with a bang. Uh, I, I love it. <laughs> the two-pack. The two-pack. Yeah, I mean. Two-pack. I, I just, just looking at this conference, guys, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, but, man, let's jump over to the next game. Uh, Jeremy, what was the next, next game that you had for us? I had the Louisiana Tech versus Nebraska game then. I know, obviously, with how Nebraska definitely started their first two games with we all know who at the reins of Nebraska. You look at the outcome, you're 0-2. Now they have a new life on the other side of things. And look what happened. They got two dubs. I'm sorry, but... Jeff Sims is not the guy. I'll say it. And I know between you, Josh, and your father can definitely say a lot. Um, Blake, you can probably 
speak for a lot as well, or I shouldn't say Blake, Father Blake. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, Nebraska, definitely these first two weeks, obviously they didn't look like what you see in Nebraska. I shouldn't say that. They, it did look like Nebraska, but at the end of the game, it truly showed what Nebraska was like. Now looking at this Nebraska team and having a new QB at the helm, it's definitely a complete turnaround for these guys. This is definitely giving these guys a spark and actually giving them motivation. Not saying that they didn't have motion, no motivation the first two weeks, but now looking at these last two weeks, it seems like you almost have a new, a new Nebraska team. These guys have actually been getting on the same page and making plays that you see Jeff Sims try and do, and they didn't work. Now you get this guy in, and he's actually making these plays work. But going against Louisiana Tech, I know the record now is two and three, but I mean before you have a Nebraska team that's now two and two, like I've said. And Nebraska, both Louisiana Tech and Nebraska didn't get scoring right out the gate until the second quarter, obviously only getting both seven points. But Nebraska found life in the fourth quarter compared to when we usually see Nebraska coming in the fourth quarter. They're going to tumble down a hill. And actually being able to see Nebraska put points up on the board – it's definitely got me to like Nebraska a little bit more. I'm not saying they're going to go and win championships here, but, I mean, these guys have definitely shown a new life into football here. And, like, you've obviously heard, these guys, we want to see old, true Nebraska for what Nebraska used to be, tough, gritty-nosed football here. And now that we see this new star, new spark for these guys, they're definitely showing something that a lot of people have really, really want to see. Not only getting wins in the win column, but actually putting a dogfight all four quarters instead of just in the first three quarters in the fourth quarter. Pray and hold on for dear life here. Well, yeah, and, and I think the, the important thing about bringing up Nebraska right now, too, I know for us it's just a regional thing, but uh, is, is just the fact that, I mean, if, if we're honest about it, I think without Jeff Sims, Nebraska is looking right now and being three and one. Uh, you mm. know that that you mm-hmm. know, and and possibly even another win in there. I don't know. I don't know if you count uh, Colorado or not. But I mean, just looking without Jeff Sims, I don't think they beat Colorado uh, without Jeff Sims um, in, in the game. But I think they make it much much closer. Uh, mm. I think that's I think that's looking more it's, like a thirteen to ten kind of loss. Uh, and and it's just that I don't think Harburg brings too much to the table in athleticism or anything. But he's he's not turning the ball over, uh, and I think that was huge. Exactly, uh, and. You know, w- one little shout out to the Nebraska nation around here because I'm surrounded by them. I was talking to a bunch of Nebraska fans on Saturday, and they kept on, "Hey, what's the scores look like?" Oh yeah, Colorado got whooped. Oh yeah, uh, Iowa got whooped. And I know we'll talk about that one, but you know, Nebraska fans, I-, I didn't hear one celebration about, "Hey, we're not, we now got two wins in the win column. We got two wins over there." I didn't hear one one thing about, "Hey, we beat Louisiana Tech." I know we should beat them. But, you know, we, we, we beat them, and the defense is looking good. Let's be honest. Nebraska's defense looks good. Don't let the points fool you because they put it in their, they put in their third string in the fourth quarter in these last two games. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited for Nebraska. I think this is, this is good, and I think I was, I was losing hope in Matt Rule when he was keeping Jeff Sims in there because if you got that bad of a decision maker as your head coach, uh, I'm scared. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking this is looking like deja vu all over again. If you're going to bring Jeff Sins in, run a wildcat offense. Don't let him throw. Under the Just, center. Don't let him take a, a, yeah. a, a long a, a, any kind of shotgun snap. Exactly. <laughs> he's going to fumble the snap. He's going to he's going to call the snap too early. It's going to hit hit the guy in motion. Perfect. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> I love it, Blake. Don't play him at all, okay? <laughs> don't play him at all. Well, and you know what? I, the reason why I don't mind calling guys out right now, because I probably would have stood with everybody else two or three years ago. Um, but guess what? You're a professional athlete now. You're getting paid for it. If you're getting paid for it, own up to it, man. You're going to get criticized now. Uh, you're getting paid to, to mm-hmm. go out there on the field now. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he, he was a terrible decision to ever recruit. Uh, I, I think he did, he needs to ride the bench. I don't care what happens uh, because he he's he's the reason why Nebraska. I don't know if they still are, but why Nebraska was leading the nation in the first two games uh, with turnovers per game. That was the only thing they were leading the nation in um, <laughs> offensively, but it was turnovers per game. But uh, let's jump on to the next game. Let's talk about Ole Miss, Alabama, Blake. Uh, what do we have happening going on down in Tuscaloosa this weekend? Some defense was played by the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, 
We don't hear about that from the SEC. <laughs> uh, Alabama hey, showed up. Let me up. my ears. Did I hear that right? Yeah, hey, they showed up. Uh, that that front seven for the Alabama Crimson Tide, uh, they got pressure on Jackson Dart. Um, we were talking about Saturday that that is one of the biggest things they needed to do. Uh, this Ole Miss offensive line wasn't great, and Alabama had to find a way to generate pressure. Dallas Turner showed up. Uh, he had one of the best games of his career and one of the best games on the weekend throughout the country. Uh, they created a turnover, caused Jackson Dart to, to turn it over. I said, hey, if you put pressure on him, he'll throw it to the other team. He ended up doing that. Uh, and Alabama shut down Quinshawn Judkins in the Ole Miss run game. That was the biggest thing. That is how you beat Ole Miss is you make Jackson Dart throw the football and you shut down the run game with Quinshawn Judkins, and they are very beatable, okay? Uh, Ole Miss, on the defensive side of the ball, I thought they did some good things, but I thought you saw a different Alabama offense. I thought things started to open up a little bit for Milrow. They started using his legs a little bit more. Uh, I, I really liked the way he come out and he handled the entire situation. Uh, he, he wasn't a, a bad teammate Saturday when he could have. He could have packed it in, man. He could have packed it in and said, hey, the, the way you benched me down in South Florida and didn't play me, like, I'm just going to pack it in. And because I make that point, too, because you just brought up NIL, Josh, and I feel like a lot of people want to throw shade at kids with NIL and getting paid and everything. Because they're like, oh, well, they're only playing for NIL checks and everything. All right, look, well, guess what? Jalen Milrow, he makes a lot of NIL money, okay? He could have packed it in. And I'm, I'm tired of people saying, oh, well, these kids don't want to compete. He, got, he took a shot. He threw a deep ball Saturday. He took a shot. He was laying on the ground. Trainers come out. I think he just got the air knocked out of him. And he got up. And when he gets up, he immediately, boom. Fired up, like let's go. What what happened to the narrative of these kids don't want to? They don't want to play. They just want nil stuff and all that. Like, come on, man, these dudes want to compete. They might be getting paid, but they still want to compete. They're going at each other's necks to win a football game. I'm kind of tired of that whole little narrative trying to be pushed that they don't want to compete. I was happy for Jalen Milrow. I thought Alabama. Uh, I thought their receivers stepped up. Their receivers have taken so much criticism. Jermaine Burton, how you doing, big fella? Way to make a play down the field. I was impressed. Is it still squeaky clean? No, there's mistakes that will be made throughout the season. But they're getting better. They're improving. Well, and, and again, too, what, what else did we say about that game? If you're going to put Jalen Milrow in, play Jalen Milrow as Jalen Milrow. Stop playing him as yeah. Ty Simpson or uh, Buckner. Uh, so, I mean, you, yeah. you have to put him in and play him like the quarterback that he is rather than trying to put him in a scheme that's just not going to work for a dude like that. Um, yep. But, Jeremy, Jeremy, let's go ahead and jump over to the other state, the other game that you had. You had uh, Iowa-Penn State, right? Yes, sir. And all 110,000 Penn State games – or not Penn State games, Penn State fans <laughs> packed into Happy Valley. And then even before the game started, hearing that the attendance was 110,000, I thought in my head – if I was a Iowa Hawkeye, I'd have a second pair of shorts because that would scare the living crap out of me. Um, looking at Iowa and watching this game, you can definitely tell the first quarter. I will give Iowa some respect. They their their defense showed up, and especially when Iowa got them pinched down inside the five yard line, they didn't let Penn State get on the outside edges and run for big gains. They held them back, and they even pushed them back a little bit. They almost got on the safety. I will give them that. However, once Penn State got rolling, it's hard to get Penn State off the track. The big thing that definitely got Penn State going in Iowa down, down into the rabbit hole was that punt that went off the back of Iowa's defense off of uh, their gunner outside, excuse me, and getting Penn State into range, then having them score. Then from there on, going into halftime, you can definitely tell Penn State they adjusted, and then they finally got their wheels going. Penn State, obviously, with Cade – I mean, not Cade, but Drew Aller having 25 for 37 for the game, 
and only throwing 166 yards for everything. But, I mean, you still see the overall outcome of the game with Penn State giving Iowa the big goose egg. But K. McNamara, there was a lot of hype and talk about him coming into this Penn State game that he was going to put up put up some good points against Penn State. I'm sorry, but if you're going against 110,000, I know for a fact – I couldn't hear a single thing with that many fans screaming, trying to change an audible. And I know originally, it, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, isn't Michigan originally the one who sets the, the additional record for the most attendance? Probably. I mean, they got the biggest biggest stadium. So Exactly. But, I mean, I think for Penn State, don't get me wrong, they're already a team to be forced and reckoned with. But I know a lot of people had a lot of hype in Iowa – putting up a close game but i'm sorry after watching that game there is definitely some work that definitely needs to be done to say the least i mean look at the game i thought it could have been better to say the least i thought iowa could at least put something up on the board and i'm being pretty generous and and let's let's be honest too with with their defense i don't i don't discredit their defense for letting up this many points that offense turned the ball mm -hmm. over four times they they gave that That ball away four times uh, so, I mean, that was mm. that was pathetic. Cade McNamara couldn't get anything going. Uh, you guys want to no. hear a stat that I saw that that it was really crazy about this this game? So, shoot, Penn State had twenty one more plays on offense than Iowa had total yards. <laughs> <laughs> more plays ran on offense than Iowa had total yards. It was p- pathetic. I think it was like ninety seven. Uh, to 76, if I remember right. So 97 total plays on offense for, for Penn State and uh, 76 uh, total yards for, for Iowa, if I remember correctly. So I just – When is Iowa going to make a change, man? Well, and, and honestly, I, I hear everything talking about get rid of Brian, but I say get rid of Kirk. I, I don't care how, yeah. how legendary he is to your school. He hasn't done anything for you really. Uh, I mean, he's he's the one in charge of all this. I think it was pathetic. Uh, Iowa looked terrible. They they did good on defense. Obviously, we knew that they were going to be decent on defense, um, but they, they they did well because they did shut down that Penn State running game overall. They didn't let uh, it, like anyone over maybe four and a half yards per carry. Uh, you know, they were they were keeping a very stacked uh, running back room down, uh, and so that was that was one good thing to to talk about with them. But let's go ahead and close it up with the Ohio State Notre Dame game because, guys, we talked about this game. We knew it was going to be close. We took Notre Dame, but that was more or less just because I, it just felt right. And honestly, looking all the way through the game, it felt right. But hats off to Ohio State because Ohio State did a phenomenal job. Uh, you were the underdog and you came out and you showed up. Your defense played and, and they played better than what I expected them to play. We talked about the Ohio State defense. I thought their their defense was the obviously the the best part of their game coming into this game, and they showed that to be true because they stopped and they slowed down a very tough Notre Dame offense. We talked about how great this offense was on Saturday too, and we were talking about how uh, it was it was going to be a problem. This is going to be the 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 toughest matchup that Notre Dame's defense is going to have all season long. How are you going to handle it? And they were able to disrupt that the rhythm they were able to disrupt uh really the, the entire game plan for for ohio for notre dame overall and ohio state's defense uh they they played outstanding uh, you went against one of the top offenses in the nation in terms of just how tough they are and really one of the toughest offensive lines for sure uh and, and you were able to hold them under 400 yards which is is a breeze for notre dame to, or to, to rack up in any other game uh, so I think I think looking at how Ohio State's defense showed up, they did an, an amazing job. But then let's let's give the QB a little bit of love too, because uh, you know he he comes in here and you look at, at Ohio State. One thing that everyone was being very critical on is they're looking over at Kyle McCord and saying he's just not the guy. He's not he's not good at making decisions. I didn't see any bad decisions from him all game long. He played an outstanding game. Uh, I, I think especially when you look at that last drive. And all of it coming down to that last drive. Uh, Ohio State gets the ball back with less than two minutes on the clock. I knew uh, that it was going to run into that. First off, for Notre Dame, you've got to run that four-minute offense better than that. You've got to be able to, to sustain a drive and, and waste the rest of that clock, uh, not give Ohio State any time left. Because I, I just knew Ohio, State, Ohio State's going to march down there, and they're going to they're gonna score to, to take the lead now. You gave them too much time. Gave them like a minute 48, something like that. 
Uh, so th they, they marched down there, and it was all because of Kyle McCord and his decision-making. Uh, he was very good at making sure the ball was getting out of his hands when it needed to. Uh, he had one bad decision, I, I believe, uh, you know, whenever he, he was trying to throw the ball away when he was getting sacked. It was intentional grounding. There was no, no debate about it. Um, but other than that, putting the ball right on Egbuka, Egbuka had an outstanding game too. He was he was sitting in there and and finding the right holes, uh, and the, the commentators were really good at pointing that out too. How he would see the hole in the defense and sit down there rather than keeping on his route, uh, and he's helping Kyle McCord find the, those open holes like that. Uh, so an amazing job, especially whenever Marvin Harrison Jr., best wide receiver in the game, goes down. You need a guy to step up, and Egbuka did that. Uh, so. Uh, seeing Emika Egbuka play the way that he did, an outstanding game from from this this offense and uh, as a whole. And of course, uh, Travion Henderson had a really good, uh, you know, a really good uh, uh, game overall. He he won 104 yards and a touchdown. Um, but then, right there at the end, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I think it was uh, Chip. I'm I forget. I'm drawing a blank on what his last name was. It was different. He's a big dude. Uh, and and Ryan Day made the right call. Because I was sitting here, I'm thinking, you can't run the ball right now. Because if you do and you miss it, you don't have any time left. And he made the right call. He threw it to his best playmaker out there, tried to get to Marvin Harrison Jr., couldn't connect the clock stops with three seconds left. You run it up the middle like you should in that situation, and you put it in the end zone. Great call, great great awareness there. Uh, and I don't want to hear the excuse that Notre Dame only had 10 guys on the field. That's your own damn fault. Uh, so you know, get your guys on the field when they need to be there. But the only thing I want to say is – and maybe I'm the only one that stands here with it, but Ryan Day, chill out, dude. You just won the game. Chill out. You don't you don't have to scream at the reporter. Uh, you know, I, I love the enthusiasm. I love that he has his guys back. But why are you worried? Or why are your guys worried about what some 100-year-old dude who, who's got a speech impediment is saying about your team? <laughs> I just, I didn't understand him calling out Lou Holtz. Uh, I thought that was silly, uh, and it was just over the top. You can you can say uh, you know I, I, we shut up the haters, and you can say it's Ohio State against the world, but calling out Lou Holtz, I just thought it was over the top. And it's it was, Ohio against the world. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. guys, I mean, it just an outstanding ga game for Ohio State, and we talked about this. If Ohio State wins in any fashion, th uh, this is this is a, a big thing riding for them, and I think that that showed a lot out of Ohio State, the heart the grit and and like Ryan Day wanted to say 50 times over and over again the toughness of this team uh they, they really did show a lot of heart being able to pull it out and Kyle McCord coming up clutch right there and 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 finding Egbuka to put it on the one yard line get up to the line in time to spike it to give yourself two plays uh just an outstanding job by Ohio State especially down there in the last drive mm, yeah uh Ohio State man <laughs> but they just kept plugging away they just kept plugging away, and they finally, uh, they finally made it happen. And that third and what nineteen throw, uh, an absolute dart there, um, and and you know getting it done right there at the goal line at the end of the game. Uh, I still, I, I don't know how good they are. Um, I mean, I, I think they're Ohio State, but are they going to beat Michigan? I think I think that defense is what I can what I can back them up. Yeah. on. I think the offense still needs a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, can't, yeah, you can't rely on on one guy, uh, whether it be your running back all game or uh, you know one wide receiver. Whenever Marvin Harrison Jr. went down, I thought Notre Dame's going to take advantage of this and run away with it. It looked like they might because the way they start they started the second half, uh, they ended up putting up you know the the fourteen points in the second half. Uh, Ohio State just was able to come back and match it. Uh, so I just I think you've got to find somewhere else, and I think you need to work on your quarterback and gain his confidence. Yeah. I think this was a big confidence boost for Kyle McCord. Uh, so maybe that's that's the thing that they needed. But Absolutely. guys, uh, I guess, Jeremy, did you have anything on the Notre Dame-Ohio State game? I didn't want to take that away from you. No, you're good. I mean, the luck of the Irish didn't get their luck. But, I mean, it was still a phenomenal game throughout the entire time. Like you said, I was I was sincerely thought, thinking that Notre Dame was going to take the advantage when Marvin Harrison Jr. got injured. But, obviously, we saw the outcome of the game. But, I mean, Overall, it was still a fantastic game between both squads, but there's definitely some room for improvement, like you mentioned. I mean, you can't just rely on these two individuals. You got to have a whole, a whole team to rely on instead of just these two individuals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But guys, let's jump over to the NFL. It was a lot of fun talking about college football, and we always have too much fun with it. I think. 
Uh, mm-hmm. But hopefully everybody enjoys it because I think college football has just got more heart in it. I don't care if they're getting paid. I just feel like there's more heart. Uh, there's at least more heart from us. But before we jump over to the NFL, let's bring up our sponsors for the day. And that is Mahler Bros Golf. Mahler Bros Golf is the best place to go because we all want to look good on the golf course, but it often, often comes at the price of you know, the expense of feeling good and feeling comfortable out there. And Mahler Bros Golf has the polos that are not just going to make you look good, but they're going to make you feel good, feel more comfortable out there on the course with the lightweight, stretchy material that hugs your body. Uh, it's going to keep you feeling nice and cool while looking just as cool. These polos are guaranteed to make you look better, but obviously it's up to you to play better. Uh, we can't really help you too much on that side of it. But on a hot summer day on the golf course, there's no better polo that you'd rather wear than a Mahler Bros Golf Signature Polo. You can go over to MahlerBros.com, that's M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com, and find the largest catalog of amazing polos with all kinds of designs for those who want to have a loud uh, design that's going to stand out on the golf course and also others that just want a subtle and kind of sleek looking design. We also have those. There's also all kinds of fun t-shirts and hats and tumblers and so much more that's going to make your golfing experience so much better. And just for being our listener, we're going to give you guys an amazing deal. You can go over to MahlerBros.com. Again, that's M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com. And use code RISING2, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O, for 15% off these amazing products. There's also some amazing coffee. That's the best way I like to start off my day, tee off my day the right way, by some Mahler Bros coffee. And there's new coffee out on the shop right now, all kinds of new blends. Uh, I haven't even been able to try all of them uh, and because there's two of them I think I haven't gotten my hands on yet. Uh, but I guess I, I have my hands on them. I just haven't been able to brew them yet. But guys, go check it out, MahlerBros.com, and use code RISING2 for 15% off for the best golf apparel and gear in the game. But guys, let's jump over to the NFL and talk a little bit of NFL. Of course, we've got Monday Night Football that should be happening here. Oh, I think it's already started. Uh, so we're actually a little little late to, to get to that. So let's hurry up and fly through this so we can watch some football, guys. Uh, let's start off with the Miami Dolphins. What a show by them. I, I figured the Miami Dolphins were going to be able to come away with the win because the Broncos are just known for losing. Uh, they're just known for finding a way to lose and blowing it. Uh, they even complete a Hail Mary and still can't even beat the, the Washington Commies. Uh, and so we got we got the, the Dolphins coming out here and putting on. We know that they have an offensive show uh, when every time that they play, but they came out here and hung 70 on the Broncos. Uh, I mean, Blake, uh, when's the last time you've seen an NFL team score 70 points? <laughs> Are you there, Blake? Uh, Yeah, I think I'm here. I'm back. Right. Yeah. How, what, did you hear me? Uh, I think I cut out on like 70 points. <laughs> When's the last time you've seen him score 70 points anywhere in the NFL? I don't think I have. <laughs> I mean, Jeremy? When I play Madden, that's about it. Outside of that, no. <laughs> when I play Madden on rookie mode, I can score 70 points every game. What are you talking about? No. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 crazy to see this offensive cool. showdown. But, I mean, we can, we can cut down Russell Wilson. And, and I'm kind of annoyed by how much everybody's cutting down Russell Wilson over this game. When you lose 70 to 20, that 20 points obviously isn't enough to win the game, but your defense let up 70 points. Uh, I mean, we got to talk about that defense. You, you've got to show up. Uh, and the Broncos overall, and can, can, we, can we lay off the Nathaniel Hackett hate a little bit too? Um, because maybe it wasn't all him. Maybe he wasn't as bad as everyone's cutting him out to be because you just lost by 50 points in the NFL. But, I mean, Jeremy, I, I don't know how much of that game you were able to catch, but I, I pretty much shut it off. After the first half, because I, you know, I can I can waste my time by doing watching better games. Yeah, I did the exact same thing. I didn't. I watched maybe the first couple minutes of it, then I shut it off once it got once it got really bad. Um, I'm sorry, but Russell Wilson, like, I'm not trying to hate on you, but you go from one game to playing great, and then the next game you look like a complete dumpster fire. I am sorry, but. That's where I stand about Russell Wilson. You need to step up. I know, like you mentioned, their defense, we can go off on their defense. That was horrendous, to say the least. But, I mean, you look at this entire game, Russell Wilson, like quarterback stats, Russell Wilson to two only was separated by, I think, 
maybe three or six yards for total passing yardage. But obviously, you can all thank your defense for that entire rest of the game just because one team actually showed up and one team didn't even get off the bus. Um, that was, if I had to honestly give you my honest answer, that was the most atrocious thing I ever probably watched in the NFL. And like I said, there was a reason why I shut it off just because I'm thinking there's no way in heck that I am reading this right. I cleaned my glasses like two or three times because I thought maybe I was just seeing things. But um, say the least, if you're asking my friend Carson Turner, who's a very big Denver Broncos fan, uh, I thought he was going to burn his jerseys after seeing that. And I would have um, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, I'll give him credit. He still is a Denver Broncos fan that I know of. Um, but after that, I mean, we're open for – for Bengals fans, but if you're going to bring the bring scores like that to the Bengals side, I'm sorry, I'll kick you right off the bus. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it was it was crazy. Uh, you know what, guys? I, I was in a hard place trying to find a, a running back, and I couldn't find a running back to add to the team. And I saw A-Chain, and I was like, he hasn't even get, been getting touches. And then he went off and scored almost 70 points in fantasy this, this week. Mm-hmm. And I was so mad uh, that I didn't pick that up. But I don't think anybody could have predicted this. I knew I knew the Dolphins were probably going to come away with the win. But I was thinking like a forty to thirty-two game or a forty to twenty-two or something like that. Not not no fifty points. Uh, so hats off to, to Tua. Tyreek is unguardable, uh, and then of course A Chain with a big time game. Uh, just a great game by the Dolphins, breaking all kinds of records. I'm not even going to waste our time trying to read all the records that they broke. But going going over to Kansas City, guys. I mean, are, are you guys? happy about Travis Kelsey it seems like it's pretty official now that he is dating Taylor Swift is this really that big of a deal I mean is it is it a good thing or a bad thing I'm just waiting for a new single to come out Blake are you muted over there <laughs> my fault uh <laughs> Jeremy said Jeremy said he's waiting for a new single uh it's it's another Dion type thing I that's all I can see on the media now I know is Travis Kelsey Facts. and Taylor Swift like I'm sick of it you know what? For me, I'm 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 proud of you, dude. Good job. You you act in a, a pretty girl, and she can sing, and she's making a lot of money. Good for you. That's about all I got to say about it. But I just the, the media about it, like everyone, like with the rumors to begin with, was like, all right. I mean, if it's a rumor, it's probably true. Who cares? And then it came out that it's pretty pretty sure it's true. Okay, well then let's just drop it. And then it just keeps on going and going. Uh, I was reading through Jake Jake Crane's uh, tweet. He said something about like, what would the breakup song be? And the, the responses to that were just hilarious. Uh, yeah. You know, it it's. Yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun going through all those. I, I wish I would have pulled those up to to read some of those those responses off, but uh, maybe you guys can put some down in the comments too. But I mean, overall though, getting at, to actual football, does it feel like Kansas City is actually Kansas City again? Because looking at this game, I think Kansas City finally came out. They looked good. I think Travis Kelsey finally looks completely healthy again. Uh, that was a lot of fun to see, and. Uh, I think it was last week he did the little like grabbing his knee uh, and everything and acting. Everyone was like, Oh no, the knee. And I, I heard him talk on his podcast. If you guys haven't, haven't listened to the uh, new, uh, what, what's it called? New Heights, New Heights podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to double check myself yeah, on that. But it, if you guys haven't listened to that, it's a lot of fun. They're, those two guys on there are hilarious. Um, but if you listen to him, he was kind of teasing and everything about that. He, he said it was all a joke. You know, he wasn't really grabbing a pain kind of a little celebration for him so uh that was that was a lot of fun to listen to him there but he finally looks like himself again he's looking good um but then you know i I, looking around at kansas city i mean pat mahomes is finally able to connect with his receivers again and he puts in three three touchdowns uh so through the air so i think this team as a whole is looking better again chris jones being added back to the defense Uh, i mean blake looking at kansas city does it feel like kansas city's back to where kansas city should be again yeah, man. Yeah, they never left. Uh, look, the K- Kadarius Tony just had a bad night that night, and uh, you know that's the NFL. That's the way it goes sometimes, right? But these are the world champs. They're not going anywhere. They're gonna they're gonna put up points as long as they stay healthy. They will be there in the end. That is a true legitimate dynasty. Uh, I mean, so so far, I, I have to throw it out there. I think the Bears are the worst team in the league. Yeah, I, I don't know another team because we could say the Cardinals, but 
uh, you know, that, that's not even on the on the list, but the Cardinals just now beat up the Cowboys and embarrassed the Cowboys. Yep. They embarrassed Dak Prescott all over the field. Uh, it was a, a, a dumpster fire down there. So mm -hmm. uh, the Cardinals came away with the win. The, the Bears can't come away with a the win. They had the Packers week one. That would have been an easy win for them to come away with. There, it's a, a struggling you Packers think. team. Go out there and, and win a game. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I just think they look terrible. I think Justin Fields looks bad. I mean, Jeremy, is this time to start panicking as a Bears fan that maybe Justin Fields ain't the guy that you need back there in the backfield? It's been time to panic. I'm sorry, but I know for a lot of people I'm talking about, okay, the first couple of years, like he'll hype up and like going to this like year three, what's he going to do? This is going to be like his make or break thing. This, in my honest opinion, it's already broken for Justin Fields. Like you look at him, he scrambles out of the pocket. He's still going to get sacked. He throws maybe one out of the four times if he's lucky. He'll maybe throw a pick or it'll get batted down or it'll be a stupid a stupid throw that you shouldn't even see thrown. Justin Fields, I'm sorry. Like you mentioned, Josh, earlier, there's a nice spot on the bench that's pretty warm. But Chicago, there's so much work that could be done in Chicago. If you have a good quarterback, I'm not saying Justin Fields is not a bad quarterback. At the same time, I do, but um, not, there's you're, definitely you're not, so much room bad. that you can do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's so much that you can physically do. Like, be better is all I can really say. Yeah, I mean, just just not a good day from him uh, and the Bears overall. No. Like I said, worst team in the league right no. now. But let's jump over to another Ohio State QB, the rookie C.J. Stroud, finally getting his first win in the in the NFL. And I think Houston is underrated. I don't think they're a good team, but I think they're being underrated for where they're at this year because I think I've, I've seen a steady improvement from their team throughout the weeks uh, so far. And, and, and specifically with their young player and C.J. Stroud and seeing how he's adjusting to the game, this might be the first Ohio State QB that actually does something in the league. Um, just because looking at him right now, he, he looked really good on Sunday uh, and seeing what he put together, went 20 for 30, put up 280 yards and two touchdowns, looked really good. Uh, and, and I was really happy for him. I'm really proud uh, for that, that, you know, that he was able to finally squeeze out his first win against a good Jags team because we talked about this Jags team, Blake. They're, they're a good team. I think they're a sneaky good team. Uh, and you know, it, it's just they they couldn't put. You know, I, I feel like the, the you know the overall, they just couldn't put together a sustaining drive and get all the way down the field and put the points mm -hmm. up on the board. And they end up losing by twenty points uh, to the to the Houston Texans. Yeah, O line was bad. Receivers dropping balls. Uh, it really felt like sunshine was a click off. Uh, and it just wasn't their day, man. Uh, their defense, you know, C.J. Stroud did what he had to do against them. Uh, hit his open receivers, looked good doing it, made plays with his feet. Uh, and, and that's how you win uh, football games in the NFL. And, and I'm right there with you. I think this Houston team is better than what people are giving them credit for. I don't think they're a playoff team, but they're going to hurt somebody's feelings late. Yeah, yeah, I just think they're one of those teams, kind of like what Detroit was last year. I think you know they're where they're they're a good team. I think they're putting together something right, and I like I like D'Amico Ryan's going down there, and what he's been putting together so far. I think this defense has a little bit of of work as a whole, uh, and then the offense seems like there's there's some relationships starting to click. I think they could work on that that run game just a little bit, um, but just overall, I think there's there's certain chemistry aspects that they could uh, they could definitely put together and become a much better team uh so overall like i said really happy for for cj stroud getting his first nfl win with the houston texans down there against a very good team too uh and and like i said i think this jacksonville team can can really upset some people later on in the season too but guys that's pretty much all we have for today uh we're gonna be back hopefully on thursday for another episode uh, and we're gonna be prepared to give you guys some more content and giving you guys some good bets on thursday for for this weekend for Week five of college football. My goodness! Once the once college football starts, man, it starts to fly, uh, and we gotta we gotta take a hold of it and keep it while we can. Um, but it's week five already, so make sure to tune tune in with to us on Thursday, so we can give you guys our top bets for this weekend, and then obviously 
uh, again on Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. We're going to have our live show so we can preview all of the big time games this weekend. Another fun fun slate of football uh, this weekend when we look at it all. So uh, make sure to tune in with us. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. It helps us more than you guys realize. And go ahead and follow us on social media, all that fun stuff. And you, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, Give us a five-star review. That is the best way to help us on those platforms. We thank you all so much for watching, for listening, for tuning in, and supporting us. Until next time.